We're going to take a look at creating a moody black and white image. But before we start a little bit about the picture, I found it on a website. I'll post the link below. Pop along, take a look. There's some fantastic images there that you can download. But if you do download them, be sure to buy the photographer a cup of coffee. Right back to this image. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert it to black and white. My favorite way of converting images to black and white is to use an adjustment layer. But before we go to that adjustment layer, just make sure you have got the default colors in the toolbox. Now, a quick and easy way to restore those default colors is simply press D on the keyboard. As soon as you press D, there it is, black as a foreground, white as a background. Next, let's go up to the adjustment layer. Clicking on the adjustment layers, the one we're going to use is gradient map. And as soon as I click on this, there is our black and white. Now we've got black through to white, but we can change the way the tones work. Let's click in the window, which will bring up the gradient editor. Now with this, if I come over to this side, the black, clicking on it, under location, you can see it's 0%. Let's go to the white. There it is, we've now got 100%. And you may notice as well, you've got that little diamond here. Just bring your cursor so it comes over and it says color midpoint. Click down, this is 50%. Now, if we move the sliders this way, you introduce more of the lighter pixels. So if I come down to where it says 50%, come over to location, clicking down, there it is. We can brighten the picture up. If we move it back in the opposite direction, we can darken the tones down. And I want to move it into this area that's looking better, something like we're getting there. There, brilliant. Just perhaps backing it up very slightly. Like it, what have we got? We've got 60%. So I'm going to click OK to that. Let's close this down. And there is our black and white conversion. Next, I want to darken it down even further. And we can do that by coming to another adjustment layer. This time we're going to use solid color. As soon as I click on this, the portrait itself disappears. Make sure you've got black. So for the color picker here, go right into the corner for the black, click OK. But if we come up to the opacity, we can drop the opacity down. And as we start to drop it down, we can see the portrait coming back. And what I'm looking at with this particular image is the area around here of the hoodie. I'm just gonna take it into that position. That will do nicely. Now with all of the adjustment layers, you get a layer mask. So with the layer mask, we can now use that to bring back some of the lighting in the picture. Make sure you've got black as a foreground color. I'm gonna pick up a paintbrush. We're gonna go down to tool options and we're going to reduce the opacity of this brush down to 30%. Taking it to 30% will allow us to come into the picture and we can bring it back bit by bit. Want to make sure I've got a soft edge brush. So just scroll through. Let's pick up a soft edge brush like uh, that one. That will do nicely. There it is, perhaps a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to take the size up a touch or two more. Great stuff. Right. Clicking to remove that. Come in over this area. Going to click down. Notice the way it's coming back very faintly. That's because we're using the 30%. Just going to go over this area here of his beard, up over the eye here, down round the hand. I just love the way his uh, head's being cradled by that hand there, up over here. Round we go, just says such a lot, doesn't it? Clicking on his nose, again, just brightening up round this area, and again over the beard. So now we're at 60%, because we've done two lots of 30. And if we come down over the cuff there, I'm gonna go over the area of the beanie, just to bring back a little bit more detail, perhaps just going around the rim of the hoodie as well. Looking pretty good like that. Just a little bit more on his nose, a little bit more to his beard, particularly on the side here. I'm just looking at the lighting in the picture. And again, just a touch on his hands and his fingers there will do. Coming over to the mask, you can see there it is a very faint, because don't forget we were using that 30%. If I just click down, you can see the difference we have made to the image, just painting in that light, just a little bit more brightness around here. If you overdo it, or if you think you overdo it, so you can see just a bit bright here, press X on the keyboard. White is now the foreground color. I can just paint that in. It's going over again. Great stuff. That looks good. Pressing X to take me back to black. There, that looks nice. 
looking at the picture, it's looking just a little bit flat. And when I mean flat, I mean a little bit, uh, you know, the contrast has gone from the image. So let's come up to an adjustment layer. We're now going to use levels and no wonder the contrast is gone. Look at that. The white pixels here are completely missing. So clicking on the slider, moving it across as we move it across, just like the gradient map, we're introducing more the lighter, more the whiter pixels. Now, if you press and hold down the alt or the option key, hold down alt or option, the screen goes black. And as we bring it over those little white spots, that's what you want to avoid. That's where it's going to be clipped in the highlights. I'm going to move it back into this position and take it right to the edge, releasing alt or option that will do. Now we can come to the center slider, just like the gradient map again. If we move it across to the right, we're going to introduce more of the darker pixels. So I'm going to darken it down very slightly. Something like that there will do nicely clicking on that. And there it is. There is our moody black and white, just switching it off and on. You can see the difference that makes. You can even reduce the opacity if you want to just to blend it in. Looking around the image, the one thing that is going through my mind, his eyes. Let us put in a new empty layer. We're going to press X on the keyboard. X on the keyboard is going to put white as a foreground color. I've got a brush, but we need to go down to tool options, take the opacity up to 100%. And I'm going to change it to a hard edge brush. So scroll down in the opposite direction might help. Let's click on this one here and just making sure. Yeah, I've switched the spacing to 1%. Uh, otherwise you get a bit of a juddery effect, right? So that looks good. Let's pop into 100% of the image. Now a very quick and easy way to pop into 100% is press and hold down command or control, hold down command or control. Now press number one on the keyboard. So pressing number one, in we go to 100%. Right, so brush just a bit small. So I'm gonna use the right hand square bracket to make it a little bit larger. White is the foreground color. We're on a new empty layer. I'm looking at the catch light here. Directional lighting is going to be from this direction. So I'm going to click down on this area and I'm going to paint it round like that. Okay, now that we've done this, I need to soften it off. To soften it, we're going to go to filter, blur, we're going to go to Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur it by that amount there. It's absolutely perfect. He says clicking on the preview, 8.8, .8. we're going to click OK. Now to blend it in, we're going to use a blend mode. Blend mode we're going to use is going to be soft lights. So and when we click on soft lights, there it is. And look at the difference that makes to the eye. Let's pick up the eraser tool. I just want to take it off the edge there. So I want to keep that black coming right over the center of the pupil. So making sure that's in the center, just click in, just to give a little bit of a rounded edge to that reflection. We're going to go out to fit on screen. So I'm going to use command zero, control zero, that's command or control. Now press the letters or the number zero, should I say, let's drop that down as well. Let's use command zero again. And if I just switch that off and on, look at the difference that's made to the eye, right? We need to duplicate this layer. So we're going to use command J or control J that's command J control J. There it is. Notice the way it's brightened it up. Now, if you've using this on a portrait and you want the eye to be brighter, just duplicate the layer. Don't forget you can drop down the opacity as well but we're going to use this on its other eye. So I'm going to pick up the move tool, clicking down. We're going to move it across like that would be pretty good. And there it is. If I just switch that off and on, you can see the difference we're making. I need to zoom in to make sure we got it right in position. So once again, that shortcut we used was command or control. So press down and hold down command or control. Now number one, in we go to 100% using the space bar to move ourselves up going to move it into position like this, picking up that eraser tool, just going around the edge like that over the center, clicking down. And there it is right back out to fit on screen. I find going to fit on screen is much easier when it comes to reducing down the opacity, going to drop the opacity down into that area there. We don't want it to be too bright, switching it off and on coming down to this one. Let's have a look at that. That's 100%, perhaps dropping it down very slightly. And there we are. Right now I want to put these, so I want to keep these two layers together. So what I'm going to do next is this one's highlighted, going to come to the top layer. I'm going to press and hold down command or control, 
clicking, they're both now highlighted. Let's come up to this icon here to create a new group. There it is, group one. We're going to double click where it says group one. We're going to call it what it is, which is. So there it is, just switching that off and on. Let's take a look. If we come down to the background layer, I'm going to press and hold down Alter Option, clicking on this. There is our color image. First of all, we changed it to black and white. Don't forget, this is all completely adjustable. You can click on any of these and you can change the settings. You can click on the mask. You can paint in more lighting if you want to. Let's come up to our levels there. And if we have a look at the levels, you can see we reduce the opacity down and there's the eyes. Job done. I think that looks really good. If I just right click, let's go to a black background. I'm going to press tab on the keyboard. Tab on the keyboard is going to remove the panels. Don't forget, press tab to bring them back. There is our moody black and white portrait. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.